six times two times eight. Yeah, what is that? Um, twelve times eight is ninety-six. All right. What about the surface area? Um, you could do six times two times two and then yeah eight times two times two and then eight times six times two all right so what does that give six times two times two plus times two times two plus that's 152 okay let's check so we got 96 for this and 152 for the next one all right, that's good. This is the same thing, right? It's the same shape. Let's try this one. What is this shape? A cylinder. All right, how do you find the volume of a cylinder? Um. So you gotta remember them, right? Because it won't be given to you. It's pi r squared h, yeah? Again, volume, the formula is the same. Um, volume is simply, in layman's terms, it's the base area, okay? Mm -hmm. Times height. And the base area would be the cross-sectional area, which means when you chop it, right, what you get? Uh-huh. The so, circle. Yeah, the circle. So the area, the formula for base area is just pi r squared. And H, there you go. That's the formula for volume of a thing, of a cylinder. I don't know if they want it in terms of pi or if they want it to one or two decimal places. Let me see. Three significant figures. So we know the volume is going to be pi times r squared. Yeah. The radius seems to be four and the height is 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pi times um, r was four. 4 squared times 10, and this gives me uh, 503 centimeters cubed. Now, how do you find the surface area of a cylinder? Um, you find the area of one of the circles and times it by two, and then you find the area of the rectangle. Right, how do you find the area of the rectangle? You find the circumference of the circle, which right. is two times pi times four. Yeah. And then what do we do with the circumference? Um, you multiply it by 10. And that's gonna give us the area of the rectangle, right? Mm -hmm. When we open the bracket. So pi times four squared times two, plus two pi times four times 10. And that gives me 352. So 503 and 352. All right, well, let's try this one. What is this shape? Um, a triangular prism. Right. How do we find, again, what are they even asking us? Look at the units here. What are they look, asking us for? Um, the volume. Right, so again, it's the volume of any shape regardless of what it is, it's going to be um, base area times the height, okay? Now, in a question like this, the question is gonna be, what's the base area? Is the base area the rectangle on the bottom or is it the triangle up here? The triangle. Right, the triangle, because if we chop this in half, like, like this way, right? Like this is one thing, this is one thing. If we chop it in half like this, then the volume on the top is not gonna be the same thing as the volume on the bottom. So that's mm -hmm. not gonna be the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional is when you chop it in half and it's equal. That's where we're chopping it this way. This is the same thing as that, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the base area in this case? Um, the area of the triangle. Right, which is gonna be um, base times height. Again, that's our angle triangle. Two. Yeah, so that's the base area. And then we're gonna multiply this by the height, yeah? 
again, we're going to look at it this way. This is going to be the height. So the height of this prism is 12 centimeters. See that? Mm -hmm. And then we can plug this in the calculator. Well, this goes into the six times. So seven times 2.5 times six, and the answer is 105. All right? Mm -hmm. So let's just double check this 105. There we go. Let's try to find um, the surface area of this. Now, unlike a rectangular prism, this one only has five sides. It, it doesn't have like a top. Okay. Mm -hmm. It has this side on the outside. It has this side on the inside. It has this back side. It has this front side and it has this bottom side. So let's work one by one. What's the surface area of the front and the back? Well, it's the same. So we can just multiply that by two, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we we just did this, the surface area of a triangle um, is just the area. So two times 1.5 over two. So this kills off the front and the back, yeah? Mm -hmm. What's the surface area of this arrow? Mm -hmm. You have to find the hypotenuse of the triangle. I believe that's given. Oh, 2.5? Mm -hmm. OK. So 2.5 times 10, yeah? Mm -hmm. That'd be the front face. What about the back face there? Um, 2 times 10? Yeah, two. And what about the bottom? 1.5 times 10. Right, 1.5 times 10, and you can just plug the whole lot into a calculator. Look at this. This and this goes away. 2.5 times 10 is 25. This is 20. This is 15. So all th these go away. So 25 plus 20 plus 15 plus 2 times 1.5, 63 meters key, uh, squared because it's a surface area. Uh, Yes, yeah, so it also asks us to find the volume. So base area is two times 1.5 divided by two times 10, so 15. You see that? The rest are a little bit too difficult for you, I think. Um, let's try two different diagrams. What else shapes are you doing apart from these three? Um, we're also doing like 2D shapes and like trying to find, like, let's say you have like a rectangle, but then you have to find like the area of a triangle and a circle in the rectangle, like stuff like that. Okay, let's do this question. The radius of the circle is two. Mm. The entire thing is 12, and this thing is, let's say, 4, OK? Actually, 4 would not make any sense. It needs to be at least more than 4. Uh, let's say this is 8. The question is, what is the area of this bit? If we poke out a hole, mm -hmm. what's going to be the area that's left? Um, you just subtract the area of the circle from the area of the rectangle. All right, so this is going to be 12 times 8 minus pi r squared, yeah? Mm -hmm. Easy as that. Um, let's try another one. So we have a rectangle, okay? Let's say this is 2. Let's say this is 5. What's the length of the diagonal? Um, How do we find the length of the diagonal? Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to call that c squared. So that's going to be a squared plus b squared. That's 29, so C is going to be the square root of 29, whatever that is, 5 point something. Okay. 
Let me see, Ashley. Um, where's the shape things? Okay, it's not there, obviously. Um, let's go up here. Uh, 458. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to be a little bit difficult. What is the volume of a pyramid, if you know? We have done this, I think. Um. I'm going to give you these, OK? I'm not sure if this will come on your test. Cone will definitely come, I feel like, because cone is the same thing as like a cylinder. And there's also the sphere. I'm gonna give you these things. So you gotta memorize them though, because you may not always, yeah, you're gonna have to, because you're not gonna be given them. And it's not that hard to memorize it, to be honest. Um, once you do a couple of them, you'll just have it memorized because it's all about the patterns. Let's do this. This has nothing to do with what we have on the screen, but it says calculate the area of the figure. Um. The rectangle would just be six times nine. Yeah, the rectangle is just going to be 54. What are the two triangular bits in there? Or um, you can just like do two times three over two for one of the small triangles and then times it by two. Right, or you can also do this, right? Base is six, yeah? Mm -hmm. The height is two. Actually, that one you're going to have to subtract it. So I guess we're, we're going to do it. The, it's going to be the same thing. So 2 times 3 over 2 times 2. That's just 6. So the entire thing is 60, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that one wasn't that bad. Um, What about this? So there's a school field. It's curved on the sides, and it looks like there's a rectangle in the center. Any ideas? So we're just supposed to calculate like the perimeter? Yes, let's try it. Um, like the two side things just make a circle. They do. So you could just find the circumference. Right. So what's the radius of that circle? Um, you just divide 22.8. Into two? Yeah. So what's that going to be? Um, 11.4, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's the radius. So we can do 2 pi 11.4. And that basically covers the whole circle, right? Mm -hmm. That gives us half of that and half of that. So that'll be the circumference. And we can add that with, what do we add that with? We're trying to find the perimeter of the diagram. 49.2 times 2. Right, so 49.2 times 2 plus 2 pi times 11.4. So the entire thing is about 170 meters, and that's the parameter. The answer to part A. Part B, if Amanda ran 625 meters, how many laps did she run? You just put that over 170? 
All right. 625 divided by 170, and that gives me three and something. So she ran three full laps, yeah? And then she is doing her fourth lap. Calculate the area of the field. Um, 49.2 times 22.8, and then you find the area of the circle. All right, so that's just pi, and r was 11.4 squared. This one looks a little bit interesting. It says, find the length of x accurate to the nearest tenth. What does nearest tenth mean? Ever seen this, Charles? Um, there's only one decimal place. After right, that's the exactly what it is. Um, so how can we do this question? Um. You find like the length of the red line. Yeah. And then you can use Pythagorean theorem to find x. Right. So how do we first find the length of the red line? Um. Six squared plus, um, I don't know. No, no, not six squared plus, right? Again, if you look at this triangle, this is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse would always be the C value, right? Mm -hmm. The bottom triangle. And the bottom triangle B is missing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. How do we find B? So you have c squared equals a squared plus b squared. That's Pythagoras theorem. If you want to solve for b squared, you can, or, or b, you first you subtract. subtract. Yeah, you subtract. Okay. And then you can square root it. So you have 10 squared, which is 100, minus 6 squared, which is a 36. And that's a 64 is b squared. If b squared is 64, what's b? Do you just square root it? Yeah, that's a square root of 64. Um, eight? Yes. Okay, so it's a double Pythagoras theorem question. First, you got to use it and subtract Okay, on the bottom. What do we do on the top? Do we add the squares of these two or do we subtract them to find x? You subtract? Yeah, you subtract them. x is going to be the square root of 12.5 squared minus 8 squared, okay, whatever that is on a calculator. Actually, it's asking us for the nearest tenth squared minus 8 squared. So I got 9.68. What, what would be the answer? The final answer? 9.7? Yeah, that's right. Let's ignore that. Um, Let's try doing this one. Uh, hopefully I didn't clear everything I did. I don't need this, but we are gonna need these. Calculate the volume and surface area of each diagram. Let's look at A. What's the shape? Um, a pyramid. Right. How do we find the surface area of a pyramid? Um, you find the area of like um the square at the bottom, and then one of the triangles. And then you can multiply that by whatever, right? It looks like in this case, mm -hmm. how many faces does this triangle have? How many faces are you? How many faces does this pyramid have? Five. It has five faces. Um, so it has this face, yeah? Connecting here, right? Mm -hmm. 
It has this faces. Yeah, so it has four on the top and one on the bottom. Is that what you meant? Uh -huh. All right, what about the volume? The volume of a pyramid. Again, that's the same idea. It's base area times the height. Oh. But in the case of pyramids and cones, you need to divide it by three. Okay. Mm -hmm. So base area is nine times nine. That's just a square. The height is 12, but we have to divide it by three. Same thing here. Um, looks like the radius is 12.5. So base is a circle. So you have pi r squared. That's the base area. We multiply this by the height of 12, but then we divide it by a three. Okay. Mm -hmm. For pyramids and cones, you have to divide it by three to find um, the volumes. Mm, let's see what else is dicey here. I mean, if you have the formulas, it's just a plug and chuck. So it's a matter of like remembering them or using the right one. What is this shape? A sphere. Right. How do you find the surface area of a sphere? Um, four times pi times r squared. All right. So four pi and r is two point eight squared. Plug that in the calculator. What about the volume of a sphere? Look here. Um, so volume, we're looking for volume of the sphere. Yeah, look at that's the formula. It's very simple. Four over three, yeah? Mm -hmm. Pi, and we know if that's the diameter, r is going to be half of that cubed. OK? Mm -hmm. That's it. That, that's all there is. Alrighty. Okay. Okay, we can get rid of this. Let's look at this. A spherical bar of soap just fits inside its package which is a cube. So we know there's a cube here, okay? Mm -hmm. Can draw the 3D cube. That, and then like that, and erase anything you don't need. There you go, that's a cube. And inside this cube, there is a 3D sphere. We know the cube is, um, well, it's a cube. So all sides are eight centimeters. Question is, what is the volume of the bar of soap? And the bar of soap is a cube. Given this information, are we able to find the volume of the soap inside? What do you think? Isn't it just like the volume of the package? Um, no, it's not going to be eight times eight times eight. That'll be the volume of the box. Yeah. You see, there's going to be some empty space here, right? A circle does not fit inside a square perfectly. Think about it in 2D terms. Let's say this side is four. Okay. It's a square. What will be the radius of this sphere or the circle inside? Um, two? Yeah, exactly. It's going to be two. The, the, the area of the circle is not 16, yeah? Because mm -hmm. there's a free space here. So the volume of the sphere won't be the same thing as the volume of the box. So we know the radius of the sphere is going to be four centimeters. And then we simply use this formula. Volume is equals to four over three pi r cubed, OK? Okay. 4 divided by 3 times pi times r cubed, and that will be 268 was the unit of a volume. 
um, cubed? Yeah, centimeters cubed. And that's the answer to part A, the volume of the bar of soap. Calculate the amount of empty space in the box. Do you find the volume of the box and then you subtract the volume of the... Yeah, and the, the volume sphere. of the box is just going to be, well, it's a cube, so it's just going to be 8 cubed minus 268, yeah? 8 mm -hmm. cubed minus 268, and the answer is 244. Uh, meters, centimeters cubed as well. Okay. Uh -huh. So this a square based pyramid has a base side length of 13 and a height of 16. What are the dimensions for a cylinder having the same volume as a pyramid? So we have a pyramid here. It has a square base. And we want to convert this into a cylinder, OK? Any ideas on how to do this? The height will stay the same. Uh -huh. Let's first find the volume of the pyramid. And we know the volume of the pyramid is 1 over 3 times the base area. So in this case, the base is 13, right? Mm -hmm. Times the height. So boom, like that. That'll give us the volume of whatever this is, the pyramid, times 13 squared times 16. That's 901.33. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a cylinder, but the cylinder will have the same exact volume. And this is the formula for um, the volume of a cylinder. Base area times height, OK? Is this going to be an equation? Yeah, it's going to be an equation. That's right. The height is going to be the same. The height will still be 13. So there we go. We have a quadratic equation, but it's pretty simple. You don't have to use any new things. You can do it with what we know from grade 8 level. How do you solve this equation for R? Um, you divide by 13. Yeah, we can divide by 13. That's right. So 901.33 divided by 13, that's 69.33. And then what do we do? You divide by pi? Yeah, divide by pi. So I got 22.07. That's r squared. We're looking for r. And then you square root it? Right, you square root. Can you tell me approximately what this would be, the square root of 22? In your head? Um, we know the square root of 16 is a 4, right? The square root of 25 is what? A 5, right? So the square root of 22 is going to be between 4 and 5. And it's going to be closer to 5 than it is to um, 4, OK? So it should be greater than 4.5. In this case, it's going to be 4.69 using a calculator. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's about it for these. Let me see if I can get some uh, 2D shapes. Which one am I looking for? This one. Won't be there, it won't be there. It might be there. Yeah, it's definitely here. What if we work backwards? Um, look at this. What is this a net of? A cylinder. Right. Most of these are just plugs and chugs. 
I guess then you just plug it in and you'll get the answer. Let me see if chapter 10 has anything interesting. It has some triangles, but I, we've already done most of these. I remember what this, what is this shape called? For number mm -hmm. five, what is that shape? What letter does it start with? Uh, alphabetical letter. That's not fair. <laughs> Starts with a T. No. Trapezoid. Oh, okay. Right, trapezoid. Um, and what's the area of a trapezoid? The area of a trapezoid is, you gotta add these two guys, okay? Mm -hmm. In this case, the height is not given, but you divide that by two and you multiply that by the height, all right? The okay. cool thing about the trapezoids is you see that middle guy in there, the red line? Mm -hmm. This question's asking us for the rent, length of that midline and it's just going to be you add the two up and you divide by two it's going to be 35. oh okay okay that's just a neat little trick this one looks annoying determine the area of the shaded region So the shaded part is the one without the semicircle in there, the blue triangle. Mm -hmm. mm, how do we do this? Any ideas? Do you find the area of the triangle? And then... Yeah, we can do that. Let's find the area of the triangle. Very simple, right? Base times height divided by two. So that's 60 centimeters squared is the area of the triangle. What do you do after that is the question. Um, you find the area of a circle and then cut it in half. That's exactly right. So to do that, we first need to identify what the radius of the circle is. So you see it's divided into four equal parts, whatever that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing. This is the same thing. This is the same thing. So what's the radius of that circle? The whole thing is 12. Um, do you just divide it by four? Yeah, you just divide it by four, that's right. So is it three? Yes. So the radius is three, okay. So let's mm -hmm. find the area of that semicircle. So you can either have a circle, quarter circle, three fourths of a circle. This is gonna be half a circle, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we subtract pi r squared, that's the area of one full circle divided by two, right? Mm -hmm. We don't even have to do that. Only one of these options is gonna be right. Which one? Logic dictates only one of those options will even be in consideration. Um, B? Yeah, exactly, because the other ones, they don't make any sense, right? Because mm -hmm. we're gonna subtract something from that. Gone to the appendix part. Let's try doing this. A sugar sculpture is a triangular pyramid. What does that mean, triangular pyramid? Um, 
Are all like pyramids triangles? Also a triangle? Yeah, that's exactly what it means. Okay. So this means that this triangle only has three faces. Or this this pyramid only has mm -hmm. three faces. One is the front face, then it has this face, right? Front, mm -hmm. it has only three faces, and this would be the height. Um, so we know the height is 18, yeah. The base is an equilateral triangle. So we have an equilateral triangle three. Determine the volume of the sculpture. I don't think I know the formula for this one. Well, no, the formula for anything is just gonna be base area times height, except for cones and pyramids, you're gonna do this, okay? Oh, okay. Base area, BA means base area times the height. We have the height, 18. Let's work on the base area. This one might be a little bit difficult than you think. Three, three, three. How do we find the area of this triangle? Notice it's an equilateral triangle. Mm -hmm. To find the area of this triangle, it's gonna be base times height divided by two. We know the base is three. Now the question is what's gonna be the height of this triangle, right? Uh -huh. How do you think we do this? Um, it's an equilateral triangle. So the height is gonna chop it in half, okay? So that means that means um, the hypotenuse, this is still be three, but on the bottom we would have 1.5, okay? Oh, okay. So you're given the hypotenuse, you're given the base. How do you find the other side? We're interested and in finding it in this side. Just look you at subtract? the, yeah, you subtract. We're just interested in this. So that's just gonna be three squared minus 1.5 squared using um, Pythagoras, right? Three squared minus 1.5 squared, and that'll be 2.6. Mm -hmm. Now that we know the height of that triangle, we can find its area. The base area is gonna be one, uh, now we're gonna look at the whole base, right? Because we wanna find the area of the whole, equilateral triangle. So base three times height 2.6 divided by two, yeah? This is the base area of the equilateral triangle, the area of this entire thing. And then now we have that area, we're gonna multiply it by the height, which is 18 of the pyramid, okay? Mm -hmm. Look at this, one third, the three there cancels out with here. And then two goes into 18 nine times. So the answer is simply nine times 2.6. And this was the volume, right? So I got 23.4 centimeters cubed. Okay. Okay. So yeah, sometimes you gotta kind of think outside the box. Determine the radius of a sphere with a volume of this. Do you remember the formula for the sphere was for a sphere? I'll give you a hint. The surface area for a sphere is four times its area. The volume of a sphere is kind of similar to this. If you remember. Do you divide it by four? So the volume of a sphere is four over three pi r cubed. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so in this question, we've given the volume. The volume is one, one, seven. That's asking us to find the radius. So we're gonna equate this using this formula, right? There we go. How do we solve this equation for R? Um, I 
we're trying to find the radius and this is an equation. So we're trying to solve for R. You divide by four over three. Yeah, that's right. You can divide both sides by four over three. But when you plug that into the calculator, because you're dividing by a fraction, make sure to put that fraction in a bracket. So basically you do 117 divided by four divided by three, okay? Like that. Mm -hmm. That'll give you 87.75 on the other side. Now what? Um, you divide by pi. Yeah, you divide by pi. That gives me 27.93 equals r cubed. And then you cube root it? Why don't you try doing that? Cube root 27.93. If it lets you. Um, is it just three? It's not just three. The cube root of 27 is three, okay? We're trying to find the cube root of 27.93. Here, let me let you in on a little secret. To do powers or square roots that's above two, like cube root, fourth root, you can use this technique. 27.93, okay? to mm -hmm. the power of one over three. This is the same thing as doing the cube root. Try that. Is it 3.034? Yeah, that's exactly what it is, okay? There you go. Sometimes you might get a question like the hundredth root of two, right? Some calculators let you plug this in like that, but some don't. So you can just do two to the power of one over a hundred. And that'll give you the hundredth root of two. That means one, some number multiplied itself like hundred times is two. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. Will this number be greater than one or less than one? What do you think? Um, less? Less than one? No, it won't be less than one. Because once you get into decimals, right? Mm -hmm. When you multiply decimals, like when you multiply 0 0.7 with itself, you're going to get a lower decimal number. Okay. Uh -huh. So if it's less than one, it'll never, no matter how many times you multiply them, it'll never multiply to a two. So what the solution to this is going to be one point something. It has to be greater than one. Okay. In fact, I don't know if you'll let me do it. I can try it. It's 1.0069. Okay. Yeah, that's good. This one's kind of interesting. A stop sign is a octagon. That means it has eight sides. Uh, I don't know what that means. And from each side to side, I guess I understand it now. So how do you draw an octagon? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Mm -hmm. And we know each side is 50 meters long. So I guess this is 50. Each side is 50 meters long. And in terms of its length, this way it's 120 and this way it's also 120 like that. Find the area of this shape. Um. Any ideas? I mean, we could cut it into like eight different triangles. Let's let's do this. I'm gonna complete this rectangle, okay? Mm -hmm. Right? I'm gonna complete this rectangle. Oh, what is this? Uh, 120. I don't know if I drew this right, but um, 
is a diagram right? A stop sign is 120 from side to side, and each side is 50 meters long. Oh, I don't think so. I think it's it's diagonally, it's diagonally 120. Like it's 120 from here to here, like that. Mm -hmm. How would we find the area of this? It's gonna get pretty difficult, right? How would you do this if you wanted to do this? You're gonna to have to convert this into like a bunch of different triangles, okay? Hey, look at this, this is gonna be one, okay? I'm gonna use mm -hmm. a different color here, maybe I'll use green. You have one triangle here, you have two there, yeah? Mm -hmm. You have three there, you have four there, you have a thingy there, um, rectangle six, and then we can do the same thing on the other side. This is seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, all of them repeat, all of them repeat. Mm -hmm. okay? So you basically only have to find five different things and then you can multiply that by two, okay? Uh -huh. Yeah, don't worry about this. I don't think this is gonna come at your level, but um, that's how you could do this question. When in doubt, cut, cut the diagrams into many different pieces. Cool? Okay. All right, where's this book? Let's see if we can do something from here. Let's go back to angles. Nope, we don't care about angles, but we do care about these guys. I don't know if you've done the faces thing. Let's say this is 10, okay? It's a cube, all right? Mm -hmm. Let's say this is 10. And what you wanna do is you have, whatever is in this, let's say this is like filled with some liquid. You wanna pour that liquid into a cone, okay? Mm -hmm. The height stays the same. The height here was 10 the height here would also be 10. The question is, how big should the radius of this cone be? Now, if you remember, how do you find the volume of an object? Let's decipher the volume of a cone. What do you think? Um, the volume of any object is what? Base area times height. Yeah, base area times height. What's the base area here? It's a circle, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just pi r squared h. And remember this, because it's not completely like filled. See, there's gaps here. Mm -hmm. The volume for both in fact, also for a sphere, the, all of these guys are divided by three, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the volume of a what? Cone, yeah? Mm -hmm. Compare that to the volume of a cylinder. What's the volume of a cylinder? It's the same, but you don't divide yeah. it by three. Yeah, exactly, because it's com complete, right? Mm -hmm. so you, so you see there's three chunks, one chunk, two chunk, three chunk, because this one only has one, that's why it's one third, whereas a cylinder would be a three out of three. So that's the volume of the cone, right? Mm -hmm. Given that, how do you solve this equation? We're trying to find the radius of that cone and we're trying to pour all the contents of this cube into that cone. Um, do you write it as an equation? Yeah, you're gonna have to write it as an equation. That is correct. So step one, we can find the volume of the cube or the volume of the total liquid that we need to work with. And that's pretty simple, right? Because it's a cube, it's just gonna be 10 cubed and that's a thousand. We call it centimeters cubed. 
Mm -hmm. Now what? What goes in our equation? Um, a thousand equals the volume of the cone. Right, so that's one over three. Pi, R, we don't know. That's our unknown. And H, I'm we don't know. To... Yeah. Now, how do we solve this equation for R? Um, you can divide by one over three. Right, you can divide by one over three. Um, so dividing by one over three is the same thing as multiplying uh, by three over one, yeah? Mm -hmm. Flip it. So just multiply this by a three. So that will be 3,000 equals pi r squared 10. What's next? You divide it by pi. Right, we can divide it by pi. I'm going to divide by 10 first to get rid of that. So 300 equals pi r squared, yeah? Mm -hmm. Get out of the easy ones if you can, because then you'll you'll be working with smaller numbers, so less room for error. Now we can divide by pi, 300 divided by pi, that is 95.49, okay? Mm -hmm. Now what? Um, you square root? All right, you square root. So when we square root this, it will be between two numbers. It'll be this number point something. Can you tell me what that number is without using a calculator? Um, the square root of 95.49, yeah, is going to be some number point something. We're not interested in this. We're just interested in this number. What do you think that will be? I'll give you options. 8, 9, 10, 11. It's going to be one of these. 9 and 10? Yeah, it's between 9 and 10. But because it's not bigger than 100, it must be 9 point something, yeah? Is it going to be closer to 10? Yeah, it's going to be closer to that. Absolutely right. So if you don't have a calculator, you can just like be like 9.8 or something. It's not that close, so we're not going to go 9.9. .9. Mm -hmm. So it's 9.8, and let's find out what it is. It was actually 9.77, so that's a pretty good approximation. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's how you do a thingy like that. Um, let's look at what's happening in this chapter. Oh, that's probability. We don't want that. We do want these guys. Let's try this. Do you have a pool like this? No. All right. Mm, what is the volume of the pool? Um, the area of the circle times 120. Right, what's the radius of the circle? Uh, 5.4 divided by 2. Right, that's 2.7, okay. Mm -hmm. So pi r squared, there we go. That's the base area. And what was the height? 120. No, it was not. Huh? No, so this is, they're trying to trick you, right? Look at the units. This is in centimeters. This is in meters. Oh. They both have to be in the same unit, and it'll it'll come out as meter cubed or centimeters cubed. The volume will, depending on which one. So let's convert centimeters to meters. Any ideas on how to do that? So this is how it works. Okay, it's it's pretty annoying, <laughs> uh, but it's it's not that bad. Ten millimeter makes a centimeter. Okay, a hundred centimeter makes a meter and a thousand meter makes a kilometer. We're just interested in this one. So 100 centimeters makes a meter. How many meters are there in 120? So this is the same thing as saying 100 is to 1, 120 is to what? This is a ratio question. Um. 
What did we do to 100 to get 120? We multiplied it by a number, right? What's that number? 1.2, okay? You can just put this in a calculator. You see, we multiplied this way 1.2. That means we also should multiply this way 1.2. So that means 120 centimeters is the same thing as 1.2 meters. Just divide it by 100. Another way to look at it, okay? So that'll give us the volume. And that's pi times 2.7 squared times 1.2. That is 27.48. What's the unit? Meters cubed or centimeters cubed? Meters cubed. Yeah, because we converted this into meters, right? 1.2 meters. So meters cubed. There you go. That's part one. Part B, how many liters of water will the pool hold? So that's just a trick question. Um, one meters cubed is the same thing as one liter, OK? Mm -hmm. One centimeters cubed is the same thing as one milliliter. So since we have 27.48 meters cubed, it's going to hold 27.48 liters of water, not a very big pool. Uh -huh. It's more like a container. See, how long will it take to fill the pool at a rate of 50 liters per minute? So if in one minute you fill up 50 liters, OK? How mm -hmm. long will it, another ratio question, how long will it take to fill up 27.48 liters? What do you think? It's just a ratio problem. Um, it's just a ratio problem, yeah? Do you just divide like 27.48 over 50. So you got to look, right? What did we do to 58 to get to 27.48? We divide, obviously it became smaller. So we divided it by something, yeah? The scale factor. You can find the scale factor by doing 50 over 27.48. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's 1.82, okay? So we divided this by 1.82. We're going to divide one by 1.82 as well. And that gives us 0 0.55 minutes. Cool? Mm -hmm. This is a ratio question here. Before I let you go, three is to nine. Four is to what? Find me this. Um. It's not 16. Before you say 16, it's not 16. You know, again, you can look at it this way, or you can also look at it this way. What did we do with three to get a nine? We multiplied by three. Yeah, we, so we multiply four by three as well. It's going to be 12. You can also look at it this way. What did we do to three to get four? We multiplied it by 1.33. If you multiply nine by 1.33, you also get 12. So you can look at it both ways. OK, it's just a ratio problem. Unit conversions are just ratio problems, OK? OK. All right, that's it for us. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.